Good morning, everyone. My name's Chris. I'm one of the pastors here. Thank you so much for coming today to celebrate the life of Renee. Each of you is here because you knew her in some way, and you knew how precious she is. And you know where she is right now. So while we're sad, we can truly celebrate. Amen? Because she's with Jesus. And you know she ain't holding still. You know she's not labored with anything. You know there's no pain and no more suffering. Let's pray. Lord, this morning you put the verse on my heart in Psalm 121 that we can look to you because you are where our hope comes from. So, Father, in the midst of our grief, in the midst of our sorrow, in the midst of mourning, we will not turn our face from you. We will look towards you. And as you meet our gaze today, right now, we know that you are where our help comes from. We thank you for joining us today, Lord, with your presence, your tangible presence, Lord, as we celebrate the life Renee lived for you here on earth. In your name, Jesus, we commit this day towards you. Amen. Amen. Pastor Tom. Good morning, everyone. My name is Tom. I had the joy of being the pastor here for many years and being in relationship with Russ and Renee and their family for many years as well during that. And what a joy it is to, to know this family. And uh, our heart goes out to you. This is a difficult time. And we are praying for you. And I can say I know FOB is praying for you guys. And we're all here to help however we can. Uh, there's a great verse, I shared it yesterday, we had a, my wife and I were at the cemetery yesterday and uh, connecting with the family there, and uh, in Psalms 147.3, it says, God heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. That's more than just a statement, that's the truth. That God has a way, somehow, I don't know how he does it, but when we really seek him, he can give us comfort and peace like nothing else and no one else can, right? And so I just encourage you, go after God during these times, especially family. Uh, things like this can, can cause people to go different kinds of ways in their life. And I just encourage you, go after God. You'll never regret it. He's such a, a loving God. Wes has written out five stages of Renee's life. I've never done a funeral like this before. Um, well, we're talking about five stages. I think it's beautiful what he's written. And so he's asked Cindy Vanergau and I together to talk about these five stages. And I just think it's, uh, it's, it's very fitting. Um, so I appreciate, Wes, the time you've put into writing these different things and to really look at her life. And Renee is a very special person. I remember her, um, what a heart for God she, she has had over the years. And... Um, I just appreciate her so much, and she's been part of so many ministries here at this church, uh, and I'll talk more about that in a minute, but um, where the FOB is in, in debt to her ministry, her character, her integrity, and so I know if you know her, you know what I mean. Uh, each stage that we'll talk about ends in a song, and so a song that he picked out for her. So this first stage is called Finding God and talks about how she found God. I want to read some of this for you. Um, Renee Obeid was born on 12-15-1954 in Wilkes Bar, Pennsylvania. In addition to her mom and dad, she had three brothers and sisters, three brothers and two sisters, excuse me. She moved to Florida with her family at age six and lived most of her life in Sarasota. Her childhood was mostly happy, but she had a traumatic experience at age 14 that always troubled her. However, this served to help her have a heart of compassion for others. And that's true. She had a great heart for others. Renee moved back to Wilkes Bar in the 70s to live near her grandmother where she worked and painted. 
in a lamp factory. While her cousins introduced, while there, her cousins introduced her to Christ, and she accepted him as her Lord and Savior. She devoured the Bible, often sitting in her grandmother's bathroom floor at night to read so she wouldn't be disturbed. It helped to answer the hurt from the trauma at 14 and introduce her to the Lord's deep, unconditional love. Renee was an introvert. I can relate to that. I grew up as an introvert, too. She was quiet, caring, soft-spoken, unpretentious, and she became a deep woman of faith for the rest of her life. Here's the reality is that there are many good things or bad things that can bring us to God in our life. How we interpret the events of life, our circumstances, have so much to do with how we act the rest of our life. Jesus went to the cross to take the penalty of our sin. His Father, Father God, sent him to the cross to take that penalty for us. And God is familiar with pain and suffering and heartache and rejection. <laughs> and that's why he can help us no matter where we've been through, what we've experienced. God can help us and he can help us right now with whatever we're going through. He's no respecter of persons. And he uh, blessed Renee all her life and she's had challenges for sure. And you'll hear some about that. Uh, but I know that she had such a deep faith that she, uh, as Wes said, she um, wouldn't change anything. She loved God so much. She, she wanted to be an inspiration, a witness to him. That's how much she loved God. And she found God at a young age here. Wes picked out a song entitled, Here is Love, Vast as the Ocean, to celebrate her finding God's love. There's a verse from this song that says, Here is love, vast as the ocean, loving kindness as a flood. When the prince of life, our ransom, shed for us his precious blood. So we thank God for his sacrifice, and we thank God uh, that she found him through that. Let's go ahead and play that song.
What a beautiful song, right? The second stage that Wes gave us is entitled Reconciling with God. After giving her heart to the Lord, Renee decided to develop her relationship with him by going to Elam Bible College. I've never been there, but I've heard it's a great college. After college, she married and had two children, Ian and Lauren. She and her husband then became missionaries to Honduras. Unfortunately, the marriage didn't last, and she uh, came back to the state stories up uh, her kids on her own. She made the decision to pursue God even more. You know, life's pain sometimes can cause a divide, and we have a decision to make what we do with the pain and heartache, the things that we go through. But she reconciled with God during that time and said, God, uh, I'm going forward with you. If you haven't noticed, there's a lot of detours and delays in life. Have you guys picked that out yet? <laughs> especially these days. Um, some of these detours and delays in life can be hard to move past, right? Some people never move past them, and they stay there their whole life. And maybe to all of us to some degree, we're stuck in some places of our life where this happened to us, and it's just something we just can't get past. The reality is, is that when we do surrender our hearts to Christ and he can help us move past anything we've been through. In fact, he can turn something that's so bitter to be something that he can use and be fulfilling. I know I've seen that in my own life many times. Renee knew that if she moved, made a decision to follow Christ and give him everything that she had, that he would be with her the rest of her life. And so that's what she did. And she never looked back. And God never promised any of us a pain-free life. He never promised that we won't suffer or have hardships or heartache. That's part of life. But what he does promise is that he'll be with us during all of those times if we surrender our heart to Jesus Christ. Amen? In fact, God is with Renee at this very moment. I want you to think about that. God is with Renee right now. She is seeing things that we can only imagine, as that song says before we started the service today. I can only imagine. I, I can only imagine what heaven would be like. But right now, Renee doesn't have to imagine it. She has got an eyewitness to everything that's happening there. And I just want to encourage you in that, that God is, is right there with her. I want to read a passage in 2 Corinthians 5, 5 through 9. It says, God himself has prepared us for this as a guarantee. He has given us his Holy Spirit. Not a lot of guarantees in life, right? You're right here in 2 Corinthians, it says, God himself has prepared us for this. For what? For what's happening today. As a guarantee, he's given us his Holy Spirit. So we are always confident, even though we know that as long as we live in these bodies, we are not home with the Lord. For we live by believing and not seeing. Yes, we are fully confident, and we would rather be away from these earthly bodies, for then we will be at home with the Lord. So whether we are here in this body or away from this body, our goal is to please him. Now, all those words can sound a little confusing, but basically what it's saying is, when we are right here on this side of heaven, we're away from the Lord physically. But when we die, immediately we're in the presence of God. We shed these earthly clothes and we get a glorified body and we are with God right there with him in heaven. And so I just always like to share that verse because this isn't a something where we wonder what is Renee doing. We wonder where she is. We wonder what's happening. Um, we know that God is with her and she is looking on streets of gold. She is in a place where she is just blessed. No more mourning or crying or pain. So be encouraged with that. Russ picked out a song called Purify Me. And <clears throat> as we play this next song in just a second, I just want to encourage you to evaluate your own relationship with God. If you know Renee, you know she was deeply concerned for people and especially for their salvation. She had a heart because of things that she's been through to help people get past things in life. And she did that very well. She was a great listener. 
And uh, I just remember so many times he was in prayer me, and I could see that heart of concern so many times on Renee's face. And if you know her, you know what I mean. She just had the passion for people, the passion for what has burdened God that was on her heart so often. And so I just want to encourage you during this time, as we play this song, evaluate what is your relationship with God like? And I just uh, encourage you just to talk to him. Maybe you've never done that before. But just reach out to him and say, God, here I am in all my mess or in all my glory, whatever you want to say. God, I need you. And I believe God will strengthen you and help you in, you in this time. During this time, I also encourage you throughout the service and in the days to come to be praying for the family as well. And I want to pray for a moment before we play this song. Father, thank you that we have the opportunity to find you. And I know, God, at times life can be a mess and we can get lost along the way. Tragedy, tragedies come, circumstances come, and they can throw us off. And with Renee, she found a way to be reconciled with you, the difficulty that she had. Thank you, God, that she raised up two wonderful children in this church, Lord God. And we thank you for that, Lord God. Thank you, Father, that uh, you've blessed her through this time. Even though it was difficult, Lord, she found a way through you to make it. And, Lord, I pray for everyone here and all those that might be listening online, God, that you would encourage them. Help us all, God, to find our way to you. I pray for anyone that's just afar off, Lord, that you would, Lord, bring them back, Lord God. And we just thank you, God, for your love, for your salvation, and for your healing that we all need. In Jesus' name, amen. third stage is called new love. Renee continued to <clears throat> excuse me, faithfully attend church. She joined this church, Fellowship of Believers, in 1989. That was a while ago, right? <laughs> and she's very faithful here until moving to Northport just a few years ago. During the last uh, many years, she became a trained counselor and, as I said before, was a great listener. And she had a, a real calling from God, I believe, to be a deep intercessor. She was in those prayer rooms a lot, and she, if you gave her anyone to pray about, you knew she was going to pray about them, right? She wasn't a frivolous person, and well, I'm just going to pray. She's going to pray. She's going to just go to heaven with that concern, whatever it was, and you just knew you could count on her for that. And she developed a lot of really good friendships during this time as she brought up her kids in church. My wife and I were youth pastors um, back in the day here, and <clears throat> she became one of our youth leaders. 
And so that was a, a great thing to see her connecting with those, those girls especially and helping them along the way. And uh, so she was a youth leader for a while. And then um, she met another one of our youth leaders who had just started helping. And his name was Wes Canadal. And uh, I'm not saying that I put them together, but they, they were working in our ministry. <clears throat> and so they started dating, and I remember thinking, boy, I sure didn't see that coming. I didn't see those two coming together. They were very different. Wes is very outgoing, and Renee's very, very quiet. And um, all of a sudden, they're, they're dating, and, and uh, eventually they got married. And uh, Renee gave Wes the nickname Chief Charging Bull. So you might have to ask him later what's that all about, but you can use your own imagination, I'm sure. And he called her Renee Princess, or Renee was a Princess Particular. <laughs> so Chief Charging Bull and Princess Particular got married, and uh, it worked out somehow. <laughs> Isn't it awesome how God can bring people from two different perspectives, and it just works. I love that. Um, they worked through mixed families, remodeling their home, a loss of a mother, father, and a sister. And uh, they just had a, a really good marriage. Um, they were very involved at church, as I said, with many different things, outreach and missions and um, youth ministry and, um, boy, so many different things, men's ministry, women's ministry, um, and just had a heart. Whatever we were doing as a church, those guys were there. And I just want to say, Wes, thank you for that. That was just great. And Wes taught in our Bible college that we had here for a while as well. Just a great couple um, seeking the Lord together. And their love and devotion just grew and grew and grew. And uh, Wes picked out a song for her for today. It's a song, it's a personal song between him and her that uh, just became special. In fact, he told me just a couple of days ago um, that, you know, she was sick for a while here and um, was having a really hard time. And during those times, Wes would sing this song to her. And I think that's really special. And so I want to say also thank you, Wes, for being with her during this time. And I'm, I know you ministered to her and you were a blessing to her. And it meant so much. And your gentleness and your heart and your compassion, um, the Lord sees that too, my friend. So thank you for that. That's very special. This song is, is entitled, Have I Told You Lately That I Love You? you 
do. Thank you, Wes. That was very special and sweet. I know that was, it's probably a hard song to hear for you, but I know it just shares with us, give us a little window into your heart and your special relationship. So thank you for sharing that with us. This time, before Cindy comes, uh, we're going to have a time of open mic. And Cindy's going to talk about two more stages. But if there's something on your heart today that is a special memory, something that, a way that Renee inspired you, or a, even a funny memory or something, we would like you to be able to share that here in, the, in a moment. And if you could, keep your comments brief so that others have a chance to share. I'll just be down here with the mic, and you can come up here and share. Who would like to go first? Freddie, come on down. Freddie Jones. Good morning. I remember meeting um, Renee, I almost forgot her name, <laughs> Renee Canado back in 1990. I was not a member of this church, but I came to their Bible studies and I saw her, she, her children were very small then. And she, I'd never, I thought, well, I've never seen her before. Maybe she, you know, I'd never seen her before. And she came up to me and said, hi, what's your name? Freddie. Hi, Freddie. I'm, I'm, I'm Renee. I mean, she's that kind of a person. She seemed glad to see me. She'd never seen me before. And really warm and genuine and friendly. And, and if I remember right, after the Lord told me to make this church my home church, the Wednesday before my first service, after I made that decision, I visited here, and they needed people to help with the offering. So I helped, and something happened. Maybe I had the something spilled out of the tray, and she sat there. <laughs> and <laughed. laughs> you know, it was like that. And I told her just a few years ago, you seem, I told her, you and your husband, Wesley, seem really genuine. And she said, we are. Because I've had a lot of people come along like they want to be my friend. And then after a while, it's, but she wasn't like that. She and Wes have stood the test of time. She was a real, really, both of them were, are genuine people. Or she was, and he still is. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Hans Vandegau. Thank you for introducing me, Tom. I thought I was going to have to do this. What a surprise. I did not expect this at all. And the Lord just put on my heart to come here and, and just... If anything, just to share what a wonderful time our association has been, Renee, and as well, Wes, especially Wes, who I first met actually on a trip up to North Carolina when we were going to do a new roof over Andy's uh, cabin up there. And we've had a friendship since and gotten to know the family, at least part. There's a lot of names I've heard, but I've never met, which, I have, which I'm so thankful for uh, coming this day. And it just reminds me of the fact that how wonderful it is that we are a family. And I, I, want, I can't emphasize enough as of the things that have progressed and, of course, the passing of our dear, and I say our dear Renee, because she was dear to us, obviously a lot more dear to Wes in terms of closeness. But as a family of God, we just establish a closeness. That's what the Lord wants. He wants us to be close. He wants us to be knitted together in heart, in mind, in purpose, in spirit. And what a family it is. And I think of just people I haven't seen in years, like John. Wow, it's been so many years, and others as well. <laughs> it's incredible. And uh, it's so, when I think of the associations, it's just so amazing knowing Wes as I have in the closest we've had together as a brothers together in the Lord, many things we've done together. And we've been part of Renee's too in our lives, and we've prayed with her. And I remember working in, as a pharmacist, which I am, working in uh, Lawrence, your, uh, your, your grandfather's business, K&K &K Pharmacy. I even had the opportunity to work there when somebody else came. 
And uh, it was such a blessing to know all of you guys, uh, the family especially, and to hear that which was going on. And I can only rejoice for myself. I have this, just like you said, Tom, she's not only walking on streets of gold, she's, in t she's, ex she's it's now in a place that she's experiencing glory. Glory that we as believers get a glimmer of every now and then. If you're in the presence of God and he touches you, there is nothing, nothing that compares. I would think that most believers would say that. And so I think of that as Renee. She's just in a wonderful state. And for those who believe, we'll see her again. I am convinced of that. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, the Bible said there's... there's the heaven is, there's always light there, right? And, um, come on up, Steve. And the glory of the Lord shines so brightly that there's no need for other lights. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? She's experienced that. Steve Dehart. When I think of Renee, I think of the word, still waters run deep. And as the scripture says, deep calls into deep and she was a real prayer warrior intercessor for people for our church for our community nations and uh, been in prayer meetings for quite a while and when I first met her uh, people would hear from the Lord or speak a scripture or whatever and she wouldn't say much but when she spoke even E.F. Hutton listened. I mean, the old saying. <laughs> uh, we all listened because when she spoke, it was like the very words of God. Because she would ponder and pray and get the heart of God. And then she was many times a woman of few words, but it was very powerful. So whenever ever she was around, I was thanking God that she was there because I knew we were going to hear some deep things. So... Uh, I know I'm going to miss her. I love her. We missed her when, when they left the church to move down south. Missed uh, Wes, too. Old friend. And, uh, yeah, they were very, very active in this church, and they were sorely missed when they left. And uh, heartbroken when I heard she was ill. And we prayed and prayed and prayed, and we were hoping for a miracle. But the ultimate miracle is to be healed in heaven with a glorified body. Walking on the streets of gold. She's occupying your new mansion, you know, up there probably. <laughs> so, um, anyway, uh, she had that uh, ultimate insurance called Blessed Assurance. It, it trumps Medicare every day. So, anyway, God bless you and your family. Amen. Thank you. Tom? Thank you. Hey, Wes. Tough time. I just want you to know, you know, my wife and I and Renee were involved in a ministry for many, many years. And if there's one word I could say about Renee, it would be faithful. She is one that we could call and say, listen, we need some prayer warriors. And she would come. Whether she dropped whatever she was doing, but she would come. And I just want you to know that both of you are very faithful in the Lord, and that counts for so much, and we love you. Amen. I have so many uh, fond memories of Renee, and I can say that uh, in 2002, when we both were members, when we both attended a Bible study on, on the tabernacle, I had a chance to know him person, to know her personally, and even uh, me being, um, I mean, I was just beginning in my, in, in my walk with Christ, and I was known to the body as a mother who had a, a son that has embraced a prodigal lifestyle. But in, in one meeting at that time, Renee shared her heart about her precious daughter. And for her to be confessing that is a privilege. And then 
I also remember the many times that she stood up to give a word of exhortation to the body. They were always fervent, heart piercing, and I would even find myself crying. And then she, she even mentioned something that left deep impression on me about seeing the body like a chess cabinet with drawers, that those drawers need to be peeled up with the presence of God. And I remember that. She even came up with the word recalibrate, you know. I guess it was something recent, like 2016, when they were leading the Bible, the prayer altar, Wes. And I know that she would use this word. This is a time for recalibrating our walk, our relationship with Christ. And that really felt so deep. Precious is the sight of the death of, of the saint in the, in the sight of God. And I can hear God saying, well done, my precious servant. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, she had a fervent delivery so many times. Thank you, Pastor Tom. Hey, Wes. Um, I got to know Renee, especially I got to see a window into her heart when Wes and Renee led the prayer altar uh, devotions up in the prayer room, and you did the tabernacle, too. And Renee, uh, I just think of her as uh, she's, it was not her that lived, but Christ that lived in her. She was crucified with Christ, and the life she now lived here on earth, she lived through faith in Jesus Christ, the one who loved her and gave his life for her. And any one of you here who want to see her again, if you don't know Christ, she showed you the way. She showed you the way. I watched uh, 90 Minutes in Heaven last night, Don Piper. He was here at our church, for those of you who remember. And I just thought of Renee, you know, because he didn't want to come back. He kept saying, every day, Lord, why did you send me back? He saw heaven, and he didn't want to come back because it's so glorious. But she's there now. She's there. The hard part is for us that are left behind, for the family especially. Wes, I'm sorry. But we can rejoice because we have a vision and a blessed hope. And God bless y'all. Good morning. As I God gave me the heart to say it, Rene has been so faithful, not only to her God, but whoever she comes in contact with. I remember when my husband was living in Orlando, she, he got a job there, so I was here. Every time, no Sunday, Rene would say, how are you doing? How are you coping with those beautiful kids? Because we have we have five kids. So my husband got a job in Orlando, so he was commuting to Orlando. At the point, we decided, just stay there, come back for weekend. Every time Renee would see me in church, she would say, how are you doing with those beautiful kids? I've been praying for you. And one day, when I visited Renee in their house, the first thing she said to me, August, I just, let's just pray. She is a prayer warrior. She loves to pray for everything and anything. And as I was praying for the family this morning, God gave me a verse. I would like to read the verse to you. God gave me, sorry. 
Revelation 21, 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things have passed away. Father God, we just thank you for the precious life that you gave Renee. You said in all things, we should give you thanks and we should come with prayer and supplication and let our request be known. Father God, that's what we're doing this morning. Father God, I just pray you alone can comfort, you alone can bring peace that this family need at this particular time. Father God, I pray for your love to comfort them, to give them peace at this particular time. In Jesus' marvelous name, I've prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Augusta. Dahlia, good to see you. <clears throat> I love Renee. <laughs> And this is truly a heart that was touched by her love. So wonderful. And I, I can't describe it with any words except saying that great love of God was just, it, it was her. It was just a huge cloud of love. And it just melted me in many times of need. So I praise God for her and for that sweet smile. Good morning, my name is Marissa, and uh, I also remember Renee, and uh, just like Dahlia said, what I can remember from her is she always had a smile on her face, you know, a calm smile. I remember her from uh, the different prayer ministry groups, uh, and also from um, a home fellowship that I uh, I went to, that Wes and Renee were leading, and also the prayer altar group, you know, so uh, I, uh, what I can remember Renee from is, is really prayer. I could also, when I had a difficult time or when it, there was something that I really couldn't share with anyone, I would always feel comfortable to go to Renee and talk to her about it and she would always pray with me about it. So I have good memories of Renee. Uh, I remember Steve saying that Renee always spoke with authority. And uh, what I have learned from Renee is that uh, she, when she prays, she really prays the word of God. She uses the Bible and she reads the verses and she prays the verses back to God. So that is something that I have learned from her. So she was really a blessing in my life and uh, I will miss her. And uh, I'm sad that she's gone, but I know that she's in a good place. And I pray for strength for, for Wes and for her family, her kids, for Lauren and her son. John? Wes, I love you deeply. I hope you know that. And I miss her awesomely. And to speak of her love, it's undeniable. When I, when Ray, when Wes called me, oh, uh, give me a second. When Wes called me on uh, Christmas Eve morning Friday and told me that she, she only had 10 days, I said, no, no, no. The phone to him and we wept. And we wept many times since. <laughs> and so I, I left Christmas morning and drove up to be with him. Or down here, rather. Anyhow, I got to see her that day, Christmas. What a marvelous Christmas, Lord, thank you. And I sat with her and I prayed with her. She held my hand, 
and she took a couple of good deep breaths so she could speak. And this is her love. She says, tell Judy I love her. In her pain, in her suffering, she still poured out love. She was such a fine person. Wes's honey, I think he's a peanut butter to her honey. <laughs> they stuck like peanut butter and honey. <laughs> so anyhow, I love you, Wes. <laughs> Thank you, John. Anyone else? Thank you. Um, actually, maybe I'll stand down here. Um, when Renee passed as she did, it, it, they always tell me to talk. When Renee passed as she did, it, it felt a little bit like a. a a robber kind of breaking into your home and taking something special from you. Um, you could kind of see that there was some rustling in the neighborhood or maybe had some mourning, but then um, it, it just felt a little bit and still feels a little bit raw in that sense of uh, like somebody took something from you. But I know God never uh, promised that we would be able to control the outcome, and but he did promise that he would be with us and Maybe sometimes that's what we need more so than to being able to control the, our circumstances. But um, somehow uh, it's hard to fully grasp for me the extent of the impact of uh, the loss of Aunt Renee right now. Um, like my mother, she was one of the few people that I know that can somehow manage to love people deeply and accept them for who they are and yet still remain true to her beliefs and convictions from the Lord. Um, for the more, she may be one of the few people in our family that can actually listen. Well, like, what truly listen? <laughs> Getting into conversation with her was like finding a deep well of wisdom and love and a true echo of God's spirit reminding us that we can be the best version of ourselves in him. I will miss Aunt Renee's uh, uplifting spirit, her steady strength, her delicious cooking. I really will miss that. <laughs> her unwavering faith in God and in people around her and her laugh. She didn't give away her laughs easily, but when something struck her funny bone and a chuckle started crossing her face, it was so infectious and could light up the darkest of moods. Perhaps uh, one of the most beautiful things about Renee's life was um, it was somewhat of a testament of the opposite sort of of what we see in our culture where it's Instagram and everything points to oneself and everyone tries to point back to themselves. But her life really is reflected and seen and felt in, in all of those around her. And, and she left people different and she left the world different and, and better because of having her in it. Um, so, although she's not here with us physically, uh, she will always live in our hearts. And uh, I, I love Angie and Renee, and I love you, Uncle Wes. Very good. Got time for a couple more. Um, as I was kind of thinking and mourning, grieving and stuff, and my thoughts were all scattered um, over the last couple of weeks and things. Um, I wrote a few words down um, to try and kind of bring it together. So I think I'll just read those. My brother stole some of my thunder with some of the things he said, so if this is kind of redundant, I apologize. Aunt Renee, those two words are so familiar to me now, but it wasn't always that way. When I first met her, I just called her Renee. At that time, she became part of the family, technically. But we weren't quite yet family. But her love for my uncle, her servant's heart, and her unparalleled kindness quickly won me over. And before long, great to see you, Aunt Renee. We roll off my tongue quite easily. 
We had connections in many ways, some normal, others unique, and still others borderline miraculous. When I think about Aunt Renee, many, many things come to mind, all of them positive, of course. But there are some recurring themes or words that really capture who Aunt Renee was to me. Kind is a word that I'm sure jumps to everybody's mind when we think about Aunt Renee. But there are a number of other words, and I feel most, um, a few of these words really sum up who Aunt Renee was to me. Meek. This is one of the first words that comes to mind when I think about Aunt Renee. I'm not exactly sure what it means, but I'm pretty sure if our family is sitting around playing Boggle and we had to look it up in the dictionary, we'd see a beautiful picture of Aaron Renee's face right next to the word. Um, another word, I didn't write this one down, but, but um, legacy. And um, in sports and stuff, they talk about people's legacy, how many points or touchdowns or whatever. Um, but when we think about Renee and the legacy, I think about how one-sided our relationship was and how much she poured into me and how much she poured into everyone else and how her physical body might not be here anymore. But her presence and her goodness is still felt, and the world is such a better place. And um, all those prayers and stuff and those seeds that she planted are still growing and will be for generations to come. Another word that comes to mind is university. This might seem a little bit of an odd word when it comes to Aunt Renee, but just stick with me for a second. First of all, I have fond memories of a couple cookouts with Aunt Renee and my kids when they were younger at Lee University in Tennessee. But that's not really the reason either. The word university at its core means finding unity in diversity. Unity in diversity. In one sense, Aunt Renee and Uncle Wes were not a traditional marriage. They were a blended family, bringing five children with age differences of well over 10 years and from previous marriages together. Sure, there were some growing pains in early years, but unity and togetherness won out in the end. And over 25 years later, here we are celebrating our life. This blended family dynamic was a challenge, at times probably a burden, and a blessing common to both Aunt Renee and to myself. I deeply appreciate her words of grace, encouragement, and wisdom in my own healing process. I remember sitting on my parents' back porch for a couple hours one night while Aunt Renee and Uncle Wes listened without judgment, asked me tough questions, helped me to empathize, helped me to put myself in the shoes of others, challenged me to stretch myself, and offered many other bits of wisdom out of their own experiences and vulnerability. Aunt Renee was a peacemaker who could help bring people from a variety of backgrounds together. Her love and grace were borderless. She really did help others find unity out of diversity. The next word is red, as in the color of Aunt Renee's cheeks when laughter overtook her. I have many, many fond memories of Aunt Renee, but some of the best memories, some of the sweetest memories, were when everyone was laughing. This happened a number of times and for a number of reasons, but it commonly involved stories or comments, not necessarily appropriate comments, from Uncle Wes or my dad or Uncle Mike, Aunt Renee would often start to laugh and try to be discreet at first, but her body would betray her as her shoulders would involuntarily begin to bounce and bright red would flood her face. And once you saw her, you had no hope of keeping her straight face either. The laughter would spread like fire and every heart in the room would be warmed. Uh, the last word is Christian. The word Christian today often means something different than its literal meaning. Any person can say they are a Christian now. And some of us Christians have done some rather unchristian things. But the word Christian literally means Christ follower. Let me share a few of Jesus Christ's words to explain why I chose this as my final word. Jesus Christ said to love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. Jesus Christ said, a new commandment I give to you that you love one another, just as I love you. You are also to love one another. And Jesus Christ said, do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. And Jesus Christ also said, blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. 
Blessed are the, the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. These are just a few of the words of Jesus that I feel represent Aunt Renee so well. Let me close with one last story. A story that stretches across continents and states. I got married or well, remarried three years ago. Over the past three year, three to five years, Aunt Renee has shared some time and wisdom with me. She and Uncle Wes both. Whether it was at Reddington Beach or my parents in Tennessee were camping in Kentucky last April. Aunt Renee really had timely advice and encouragement. She understood, like me, she had married and had children. Like me, she had divorced. Like me, she had been remarried to a spouse with three children. About six miles from here and just over a year ago, my late father-in-law was lying in a hospital in what turned out to be his final weeks. And Uncle Ress and Aunt Renee came to see us and we prayed. And she prayed over Poppy. Aunt Renee prayed for Poppy and for Naomi. She prayed for my father-in-law. But that wasn't the only time she prayed for him. That wasn't the only time she prayed for her. The night before I got married, Aunt Renee and Uncle Wes and Poppy were standing around talking and realized they had a connection. I don't recall exactly how it unfolded. After all, I was a little distracted getting married the next day and all. Um, <laughs> but I think it was Aunt Renee who first realized that they had a connection. Some 600 miles away from here, Aunt Renee and Uncle Wes's church had helped support Naomi's family as they were missionaries. And my late father-in-law would come and visit this church, and this church helped pray over him as they were missionaries to India and to Bangladesh. And some 20 years later, I married a woman that Aunt Renee and Uncle Wes had been praying for in this very building 20, 20 plus years ago. Um, that's been a very big comfort to, to my wife, Naomi. And you can chalk it up to a nice coincidence, but with over 50,000 churches in the Southeast, I feel the explanation is much closer to divine intervention. The fact that Renee had been praying over my wife before we even met has always been a warm comfort to me ever since I found that out. Not only have I been blessed to have her in my life, so is my children and every one of us. Love you, Renee. Thank you. Amen. That's so good. We'll take one more. Well said. Connie Moulton. I will always consider Renee as one of my dearest friends in life. She was a great Christian influence in my life also. And uh, we spent many times together. Um, one thing that I remember uh, about her was uh, just you know, her face when she would smile. She would smile with her whole face and it was just like a glory. And she did exhibit the glory of the Lord. But also she shared with me one time the um, uh, scripture that she felt like God gave her, and it was in Philippians 4, and I think it's verse 16, it's near the very end of 16, um, or again, chapter 4, but it was about uh, suffering and suffering for Christ, and uh, she, God gave her that, that verse, and she, and it uh, proved out, but she walked through it, and she was a, still a great survivor no matter what she went through. And that's uh, one of my greatest regrets that I didn't get down to see her when she was so ill. And and because uh, my husband and I, we don't drive out of town anymore. So, um, and I knew Wes was so uh, exhausted and, and uh, Renee was so ill. So I just had to pray to the Lord that the Holy Spirit would send love and strength their way. And uh, so their, the whole family was a great influence in our lives. And we just... Thank you for God putting us together. 
Thank you. And I know she's got that big smile on her face because she sm smiled with her whole face. Thank you, Connie. Wes? All right, all right. Thank you all for being here. Um, I don't know that my words can really express. Renee, you know, I thank every one of you for getting up here and speaking because you've said a lot of what I feel inside. I don't know if I could have expressed it, but I know she's touched each one of us. Uh, that's why we're here, you know, because she loved. She loved with the love of her Savior. She loved like we are commanded to love in, in this Bible that I've fallen so short of so many times. But she stood fast and loved regardless. And I, I brought the Bible just because the Bible outlines what love is for us. Many of you probably know this verse. But love is patient. Love is kind. It is not jealous. Love does not brag. It is not arrogant. It does not act unbecomingly. It does not seek its own. It is not provoked does not take into account a wrong suffered. It does, does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices in truth. It bears all things, it believes all things, it hopes all things, and it endures all things. Love never fails. It goes on in that scripture to talk about prophecies and all these things that people do, the faith that can move mountains. But at the very end of that chapter, it says... But now faith, hope, and love abide in these three. But the greatest of these is love. And when I read that, it's like, that, that is Renee. You know, it's like describing Renee as a person. It's what she lived day in, day out. It's what we've experienced by knowing her. It's what I've been blessed enough to know. You know, and... The book of Isaiah talks about the Messiah. The coming Messiah talks about him being a man of sorrow, being acquainted with grief. And Renee, she knew sorrow, she knew grief, but she didn't let that change how she loved others. I've failed so many times in that. I've hardened myself. I've been mean to people. I've hurt people in this very room because of my hardness that I've allowed. But Renee, she was always a rock. She always was an example of love for me and for each one of you, I know. I'm just thankful that God shared her with us. I'm thankful that she loved us. I've seen her love the broken. I've seen her love people walking, doing whatever they're doing in life, myself included. And never once did she waver in her love for those people. She prayed for them. She was faithful, as we've heard, and she loved. Thanks. Amen. Well said. Thank you so much. Thank you for everyone that shared. And uh, when we conclude today, after Cindy shares... There's refreshments and outside there in the, in the foyer lobby. You can um, mix with each other. And if you have something that's on your heart to share with one of the family members, that would be a good place to do it as well. I want to say one thing real quick that stood out to me is we hear so many great testimonies here. And the word legacy was used. Um, and I was thinking about that um, myself is the one thing in common when you go to a graveyard and you see tombstones, they all have a beginning and an end. But in the middle is this little line and a dash. We're all still working on our dash, right? <laughs> We're still alive. And Renee has finished her dash. She now has an end here, but is starting off in heaven now. And I don't know about you, but hearing all these testimonies, that woman has what you call a legacy. Amen. And so 
Friends, that's something that we have to work on ourselves. What is our legacy going to be? What will be the story of our dash? How will we run our race? And I just encourage you, let that sit with you for a while. And it's sitting with me too. And so I just want to encourage you in that. This time I want to ask Cindy to come on up. She's going to share the last couple stages. Thank you. I know it's going a little long today, but what a blessing it's been. Amen. Thank you, Cindy. That was beautiful and precious. Thank you. So stage four, um, I'm not going to tell you the title. I'm just going to share it. And for those of you who don't know, Hans and I have been friends uh, with Wes and Renee, I figured, for about 30-ish years. It's a long time. Um, so I'm going to re probably read this. The tears are not tears of sadness, but tears of love. And so this is stage four. Wes and Renee became empty nesters, and their time was filled with steeping in the word of God. And we can picture that, right? Morning coffee and devotions, camping, more grandchildren. If you saw the slide, you saw just that smile on her face when she was with family. Ten grandchildren in all, and building a beautiful retirement home. Things were going well. Hans and I visited Wes and Renee in that time when they had moved into their new home. And I would say from my perspective, it was the best that I have ever seen Renee. And at first I thought it was, you know, she's got a new home, it's a new chapter, it's a nice season in life. Um, but I asked her about it. I asked her what was happening in her, and she ended up sharing with me that something that had happened between her and the Lord, and she had gone before the Lord in those, as she did was her lifestyle, and God had deeply touched her in an area in her life, and she just had so much more freedom and joy, and all this, all that was all already in her, but it was now coming out even more and more. So it was a good time for them. And she was still in that love relationship with the Lord. But then things changed dramatically. On August 8th, 2021, it was a hard, unexpected, and challenging journey that began with a diagnosis of a brain tumor and cancer. But Wes and Renee are true believers, and they trusted the Lord through it all. And this is really important, especially for family members and for a testimony for all of us. Renee was never afraid through all of that. She was never afraid. She'd never let go or lost the peace that she has from the Lord. Did she struggle? Of course, we all do. We're not superhumans, but she had a firm foundation in her. And that was a strength for her during this time. She was scheduled for surgery on August 11. And while she was awaiting the surgery, she was in the hospital on her floor. And she would walk around the hospital and pray over the floor where she was, other people who were having brain issues. And she'd just pray over the patient. She'd pray over the workers just walking around because she's always a missionary. She's always a woman on a mission for people's hearts to be touched. And I remember we spoke with her the night before the surgery, and we had a phone conversation with her. And all I can say is, wow, the presence of God was so strongly upon her. We could sense it through the phone when we were talking with her. This was, it was beautiful. I'd known Renee a long time. She always walked in the presence of God, but it was increasing mightily in her life, especially at the beginning of this season. And it was amazing. She was there to minister to others, and the presence of God was there for that to happen. But the challenges that came during these little less than five months were challenging indeed. But God was doing something new in Renee in the midst of all of it. And this is what I want to focus on. If you knew, as you knew Renee, she would often ponder in her heart. She was that deep thinker, that deep calls unto deep. And she would ponder the things of the written word and the things that she was hearing from God that he wanted to speak. 
And she knew during this season with this, these challenges, physical challenges going on, she knew that God was crafting a word inside of her. And we who knew her would see oftentimes the outworking of that crafting. She would hear something for the Lord, and she would just ponder it for a long time. She was not casual with her words nor premature with her words. But when she felt a release from the Lord to share something, she would share those words. And so she said the same thing. God was crafting a word inside of her. And this is the scripture that she was pondering, that she had heard from the Lord. And it's from Philippians 3.10. That I may know him in the power of his resurrection. And the fellowship of his sufferings. Her physical sufferings were real. But she was focused on God and what he wanted to speak in the midst of it. But she was not able to share the end result of that word. She went to be with him before she could share or tell us what the end result of what that verse was and what God was speaking to her. And I can't speak for Renee, but I do believe that has, God has given me one potential part of that word, and I want to share that with you. But I want to share that in the next phase, the last stage of Renee's life here on earth. But before that happens... I feel there is good news to share in the midst of the pain and the sorrow. And it's from Isaiah 61 too. And it says that God promises to comfort all who mourn. You don't have to be a believer to get the comfort of God. If you are a believer, you as well qualify. And that's what I want to do right now. This comfort is available to all of us, what, irregardless of what we believe about God or don't. And I want to share a little bit about the morning. Morning, this from my experience, and you can add to this as you're sitting there in your seat in your own heart. Morning feels like an emptiness inside, an absence of joy, an absence of life. It feels very lonely. Morning also feels like regrets and what ifs. If only I had said this, if only I had done this, if only I hadn't said this, if only I hadn't done that, why didn't I say this or why didn't I do this? Mourning can be like a heaviness on your life that weighs you down. But the comfort that comes from God, whether you're a believer or not, addresses the things of mourn mourning. It removes the heaviness off of our lives. While we will still miss Renee or anyone else that we may be mourning, we can remember the good and not be weighed down with the regrets or sadness. Renee had no unforgiveness in her heart, none, towards anyone. Not one thing did she hold unforgiveness in. And she had also had forgiveness for herself. She knew she wasn't perfect, and she knew to forgive herself for her own failings. She was free in her soul from anything related to unforgiveness, and she wanted that freedom for everyone else, the freedom of forgiveness. So I want to do something. I do want to pray, and if you are comfortable, I would ask you to close your eyes and bow your heads. This is not for a religious thing, but simply a way to shut out the distractions for just a moment. And I want to pray, and I ask you to agree with me in those areas of the prayer that you can agree with in your heart. So, Father, we come to you, the God of all comfort. Whether we believe in you or not, you give comfort to all who mourn. All who mourn. Father, you know what our mourning looks like in each heart. You know what it's like. And, Father, we know that your arm is not too short to remove the mourning and the heaviness from out of us, oh God, that we don't carry this around this morning, whether it's for Renee or any other person, oh God. And I remember when my mother died at a very young age, and I was so in heaviness of mourning, I couldn't laugh anymore. And God, I, I didn't even believe you. I didn't even know you existed. I didn't know if you were real or if you were good. But in my desperation, I cried out to you. 
And I felt like you did a surgery on me where your arm reached down inside of me and pulled out this heaviness and this mourning and this sorrow that I could have this peace that only comes from you. And so I pray that for all of us here, that we do not carry around the heaviness, but your gentle touch just removes it. We let it go, Lord. We let go of all the regrets. We let go of the what ifs. We let go of the things that we did or didn't do, the things we said or didn't say, because Renee's not holding on to any of that. And so we don't hold on to any of that because it does not profit anything. And so we open up our hands and we let go of everything that is of mourning, that is of regrets. And we just let it go. And we say, fill us with a peace. We know we'll still miss her and other loved ones, but fill us with a peace that passes all understanding, oh God. Fill us, oh God. We desperately need your peace and we need your comfort. And I pray that especially for this precious family on Renee's side and Wes's side, this precious family, oh God, touch them. You didn't love me more. You love them just as much as you loved me, even when I didn't love you. Touch them, I pray, God, that they can go forth, Father, and have a healing inside of them for the rest of their days. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 The what ifs and the regrets don't help. They don't change anything. So at any rate, we're going to do a song now. It's called New Wine. And the words of this song represent Renee's life during this stage of her life. It was one of the things that she grabbed a hold of for strength for her. And I pray that it would be strength for you. And it's called new wine with a biblical understanding that while old wine is wonderful, new wine is even better. And so this is all about that. In the crushing, in the pressing, you are making new wine. In the soil I now surrender, cause you are breaking new ground. So I yield to you and to your careful hand. When I trust you, I don't need to understand. Make me a vessel. Make me an offering. Make me whatever you want me to be. I came here with nothing but all that you have given me. So Jesus, bring new wine out of me. In the crushing, in the pressing, you are making new wine. In the soil I now surrender, cause you are breaking new ground. you have given me. 
So Jesus, make new wine out of me. Jesus, make new wine of my legacy. Jesus, bring new wine for my legacy. Tears of love. Uh, that is Lauren, Renee's daughter, and she is with child number two. New wine. New wine. Amen. Amen. This last stage, which is about this part of Renee's life, it's not the end, but the part of this time on earth, and it's called going home. Renee was a person has been attested of unceasing prayer. She was created and called to be an intercessor or one who stands for another, much like an attorney represents a client before a judge, but in a spiritual way. It is someone who pleads on behalf of someone else before the heavenly judge, asking for mercy through the death and resurrection of Christ based on his merits and not our human mer merits. She had also become a prophetic intercessor. While an intercessor stands in the gap for someone else, a prophetic intercessor he hears and reveals what God is speaking in a given situation or moment. What Renee would hear from God would either be further fuel for her prayers or would become words that she would speak out to others. Even in her sickness, she still interceded, as John even attested, and we saw her the, at the end, the last week, and she was still praying for others. She's praying for others. She's in this place with a lot of suffering, and she's praying for others because that's what she was called to do, and that's what she was obedient to do, a prophetic intercessor with her words and with her life. Renee was called to pray for her family. She loved you so much. And for the Western Church. So in a very real sense, in the last significant battle of her life, she was praying for all of us. And though she suffered much through it all, she praised God and submitted herself to him. She emptied herself of self so that his will might be done through her. So remember the word that the Lord was crafting inside Renee about the fellowship of his sufferings. She was hearing this as a prophetic intercessor. It wasn't just about herself. It was a word for all of us. And it's so true that there is suffering in our world, and it impacts every single one of us, perhaps even more so than we've known in the past, including the, all of us here. So while Renee went through all that she did, it was not the overriding hallmark of her life. It was not what defined her. And it is not how we are to remember her but through the eyes of sufferings. Instead, we are to see the rest of the story, as the famous expression goes, 
And what is the rest of the story after the fellowship of his sufferings? When Renee peacefully left her body and went to be the, with the Lord on December 29, she stepped into the other side of the suffering, part two of that crafted word about the fellowship of his sufferings. And this is from Romans 8:18. 8, we have sufferings now here on this earth, but these sufferings are nothing compared to the great glory or overwhelming presence of God that will be given to us when we are with him. That's how we're to remember, Renee, the overcoming power of the glory of God. That's how she lived. It never defined her to stop her. She was always looking for the more of God. And Renee is now living in that glorious presence of her God. She is not suffering any longer, as already been said. But now she knows him in the power of his resurrection. She knows that is the other side of the sufferings, the eternal perspective that she lived by, and it was her strength. Her final wishes were that her family would know and share love in a greater way than ever before, as has already begun, even during her struggle. And that we, the Western Church, would look beyond the elementary teachings of Christ and truly press on to maturity, to press on beyond the shallow things of this world and toward the goal of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. May she always be remembered as the unique person God created her to be, a devoted wife, mother, daughter, sister, cousin, friend, and most of all, devoted to her Lord Jesus Christ. What a powerful legacy to re leave behind. And so I challenge you, especially family members who saw her through these last almost five months, don't remember her like that. Remember who she was on the inside. And I know sometimes those images can be hard to be removed, but let's have them erased. And we remember, like we saw in the slideshow, we remember that smiling face and that cheerful heart that she was. So Renee is now living in glory. No more tears, no more sorrows, no more mourning, no more pain. So let's listen to the words of this song. It's called Glorious Day. And we can imagine Renee in this song. One day when heaven was filled with his praises, one day when sin was as black as could be, Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin, dwelt among men, my example is He. The Word became flesh and the light shined among us, His glory revealed. Living He loved me, dying He saved me, buried He carried my sins far away.
he carry my sins far away? Rising, he justified. Let's picture Renee do, doing that in the glorious presence of God. So we can stand. We're almost done. I just have one last thing, one final thing. Um, and as Tom mentioned, there'll be refreshments out there. Everyone's invited to join with the family in that. Um, and Tom and I will be up here. If any of you have any questions or need additional prayer or anything, we're here to do that with you. And because of the word legacy that I had in my notes and sh several of you have shared, including Lauren, um, I would just challenge you that if any of you feel any kind of drawing towards prophetic intercession, that you would follow that. You would listen to that and obey that like Renee did. Find out what that is. Learn more about it. Walk in that as Renee did. And so for this last thing that we're going to do... Um, I want us to clap our hands and applaud. And what I feel we're to applaud, one of two things. You can applaud both or one or the other, depending on where your heart is. And we're not applauding Renee because she's not here. She's with us in our hearts, but she's not here. She is with the Lord. So we're not applauding her. But I feel the applause would be, with Renee in mind, to give thanks an expression of thanks for her impact on our life. It's just a way of saying thank you. We acknowledge that Renee has touched our life in an, a lasting way. And the second reason for the applause, depending on where you are, we want to give thanks to Jesus Christ for his faithfulness to her throughout every season of her life. And she is now with him. The Bible talks about a great cloud of witnesses in heaven that are cheering us on here on earth. I don't know if Renee is a part of that, but what we knew of her, we know that is who she is, right? She is still cheering all of us on, especially her family. And when Renee went to be with the Lord, she was massively greeted with great adoration from God and from the host of heaven. And so here on earth, let's just join that applause as a lasting thing in our hearts. So, Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness to Renee. Thank you for you are the one that answers all her prayers, and you are still working on answering those prayers here on earth, especially for her family and loved ones. So we bless you. We pray your peace over this beautiful family and over all of our hearts, O oh God, that we go forth with a greater strength having been touched by Renee and her love and your love through her. And we honor you, Father, for your faithfulness. And we remember Renee as she is now in the glorious presence of God and that we pray that we will all be able to see her one day soon. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You're dismissed. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine. Yeah. Surrounded by your glory. What will my 
heart feel Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine I can only imagine day comes and I find myself standing in the sun I can only imagine when all I would do is forever forever worship you I can only imagine yeah I can only imagine To my knees will I fall, will I sing hallelujah, will I be able to speak at all, I can only imagine, yeah, I can only imagine.
Oh.